drinking a raspberry lime pilsner today from the Lighthouse Brewing Company. I think this is mine. It might be my roommate's. It might be my girlfriend's, but I'm pretty sure it's mine. I think I got it for like a birthday present from the Lighthouse Brewing Company. I forget if I mentioned that already. That's pretty good. Welcome to Weird Canadian Kid Shows. I'm really excited about today's episode. We're talking about doodles, which was like a little bumper in between type show. Like it would come on Teletoon uh, in between like one show and the next because it was really short. And I think the animation uh, style is really creative. It's very simplistic and it would use the art form of animation very effectively. It, you know, it would play with your imagination. It would do things that you just couldn't do with live action. It would create a setting and then use the power of the pen. I was getting fucking way up my own ass here. I do think that this kind of really inspired me. I used to draw comic books in my class when I was a kid, and I think the art style, while not exactly the same, was definitely inspired by this show. It was created by Cellar Door Productions, and it was animated by the Trapeze Animation Studio. They're like little silent vignettes, you know? Like, they're just, there's no dialogue or anything. There's sometimes there's like, like gibberish dialogue, like simlish almost. <laughs> And it's cute, it's fun, it's creative, I'm repeating myself now, but we gotta get to the weird shit. Cause that's the name of the show. This ain't good Canadian kid shows, though sometimes that title would apply. This is weird Canadian kid shows. So let me hit you with the, the general plot. The, the basic continuing thread between all of these doodles, so to speak. The doodles will usually begin with a hand bearing a pen, drawing the main doodle character. We'll call him uh, Doodle Jim. Let's see if he has a name. I'm going to look it up right now. Oh, his name's Dude. That's clever. Dude in hand. The hand would come down, draw a dude, and then dude would be in some sort of situation. But here's the thing. Dude never asked for anything that was happening to him. What essentially happens in the, sh in the show is that dude is forced into existence by the hand, hand of God, if you will, and then he's subjected to basically psychological and physical torture. And this is what bothers me, is that there's no reason for any of it. It's mindless. Dude never asked to exist, none of us really asked to exist, and his God doesn't even have the courtesy of abandoning him. His God sticks around the hand, or, or the hand, brings him into life just to torture him. Why draw this, this little character if you're just going to drop him out of the fucking sky? Why give him a flower if you're just going to make him watch it die? Why give the gift of magic to the small character if you're just going to abuse him with it? It's things like these that keep me up at night. It's things like this that, uh, that make me ask why. In a very general sense, why? Like this poor doodle. What did he do? He doesn't exist for one moment, and then he comes into existence only to be hurtling to his death and then be split by power lines. I also find it exceptionally cruel that this hand can will him in and out of existence. must be torturous. Im imagine if whatever god you believe in just pulled you out of existence, threw you back into the ether, into limbo, into purgatory, only to bring you out at his own whim, for his own enjoyment, and then to fucking draw a tiger next to you, and then you have to fight a tiger, only to be thrown back into limbo moments later. This is a 5% alcohol. Um, I, I think the Lighthouse Brewery makes some really good stuff. Uh, their lager, the Lighthouse Lager is pretty good. But yeah, it's a good creative cartoon. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can find like almost all the episodes online. I found a, a good chunk of them on YouTube, at least a majority of the ones that I remember watching when I was a kid. And, and it's interesting is that some of them are really simplistic and then some of them get to be a little bit more elaborate. 
and it never loses its charm, despite getting more elaborate in some future installments. Now, I used to look forward to these almost as much, if not more, than the actual main shows that would come on Teletoon. Another little uh, tidbit of information, uh, this little short series, these shorts, uh, won, uh, won two Gemini Awards. What's a Gemini Award? I couldn't be fucked to look it up. But yeah, so thank you for watching this episode of Weird Canadian Kid Shows. Uh, I don't know what you would call this, Weird uh, Canadian Buffer. There was another Buffer show, though, that I wanted to talk about. That's just what I'm going with now. Bumper show, Buffer show, in-between show. Uh, but it was Worms in the Olympics. If anybody knows what the hell I'm talking about and can point me in the direction of this, I've been looking high and low for it, and I can't find anything, and anybody I've asked about it, everybody I've asked about it has looked at me like I'm a fucking insane person, but there was a show, it was stop motion, or at least animated to look like stop motion, where it was Worms partaking in athletic events, and I like it had a very Olympic feel, like they carry a torch at the beginning, Maybe they weren't worms, maybe they were snails or slugs or other bugs, but I'm pretty sure that they were like the kind of bug that like glides. I'm pretty sure it was worms. Worm Olympics, something like that. If you know what the hell I'm talking about, please uh, comment down below and let me know what it is. Uh, like and subscribe. Ring that motherfucking bell if you feel like it. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Weird Canadian Kids Shows. I'll be back soon with more.